In this video, I'm going to be showing how to go about uh, scanning a couple of models that I'm going to be doing a digital denture on. Now, one of the things that I'm going to show that's unique in this is uh, how to acquire the data. So we'll use the Shining 3D scanner to acquire the data. And then I'm also going to be doing an immediate denture on the upper arch. So I'll show you how I do the virtual extractions on that. So I'm in the Shining 3D software. And the first thing I'm going to do is create an order. So when I come up to the prescription screen like this, I can choose any two random teeth in this, and I usually just call this a, uh, an anatomic crown. It doesn't really matter what you tell it you're doing. Um, you just need to designate some job in one arch and an antagonist in the other arch. So that's what I've done here. And the models that I'm going to be scanning in here are two uh, non-separated models. So when you see this, separated refers to something cut into dyes. Non-separated models is just conventional models. And for my occlusion type, I'm gonna be doing two stone models in occlusion. All right, so now we can go ahead and proceed forward. So you have to save it and then you can scan. Now once this screen comes up, I'm going to tell it that I am going to scan the bite in an articulator. So I can push OK now. And you can see the preview up in the top of the uh, left hand side of the screen. And right now what I'm doing is placing the articulator with both models into the field of view. And this is only going to take uh, just a single picture here. So I can auto adjust uh, the screen and now we can proceed forward. So I'll push scan. It's just going to take a single buckle bite picture. And one thing you're gonna notice with this is that the reason I'm using an articulator is because I've actually opened the bite. So as oftentimes is the case in an immediate denture case, you might have to open up the bite a little bit to have adequate room uh, to build the denture into. And that's what I'm doing here. So an articulator just makes it easier to do that rather than trying to open them with an intraoral scan. So once I've done that, I can remove the articulator and the total jaw. We adjust the cut height down below this because I don't want to cut anything right now. Uh, click next and now it's going to tell me to remove the articulator, which I've done. And now it wants me to insert the lower jaw. And so what I'm doing right now is placing the uh, lower model into the model holder and we can position that onto the scan base and as you see right here it's a little too high so I'm going to take the height extender off and just place the model on uh, normally. So you can see here that the model is showing up great. Uh, we can proceed to next and now it's going to scan the lower model. Okay, the lower arch is done scanning and we can look this over and make sure that there's not any missing data. Uh, if there is, we could certainly reorient the scanner to look into an area such as this and add a scan. It will turn to that position and take another shot so we can capture that data. And as you can see, that filled in a lot of those holes. I'll do that one more time to capture this area where the lingual flange is going to be. And I'm not terribly worried about closing every tiny little hole. Like if that has a little spot, I'm not really worried about that. I would like to close that one and hopefully we can. That could be just because there's too narrow of a gap there, uh, but that looks like it closed it in this time. So next, and now we'll change over and put the upper model in. So as you can see, the upper model has been placed and uh, we've got a now nice rendering of the lower model and we can click next to scan the upper. Okay, this is your upper model now and this looks like it did a really nice job. I'm not seeing any holes here and so we can proceed uh, and that will finish up the scanning aspect of this case. Now what the software is doing is it is stitching the upper and the lower to the buckle bite. So you can see a nice stitch right here. I can click next and do the upper as well now. 
And as you can see, what has happened is that now we have the upper and the lower models, and they're in the open vertical dimension that I uh, established with the articulator pin. If you wanted to, you can now do some uh, trimming of your models. I don't do a whole lot of this usually, uh, but just to give you an example, we could select that bottom, push delete, and it'll clean that model up a little bit. Uh, let's maybe do that one more time on the upper. delete and now we're good. So I'm going to say fill holes and any little holes in the mesh we can fill up and now we're completed with the scanning. Now to find those models we just go up to open and it's going to open up the uh, folder where those files get saved the total jaw is just that buckle bite. I just want the upper and lower, and I'm just going to drag them in to Blue Sky Plan, and it will import those. So here are our two models, and the first thing I'm gonna do is get my models all aligned correctly. And one of the tools I use to do that is something new in the, the newest version of Blue Sky Plan, which is this grid. So I'm going to turn on the grid visibility. Now, to explain what this is for, Anytime you're doing a digital denture case, you first of all need to make sure that your models are aligned in the same orientation as this head. Now this grid has been designed uh, to align perfectly with the head, but it's also really nice for maintaining symmetry, for setting your occlusal plane, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, put the vertical component through your midline. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just for right now turn off the lower model, and in my model manipulation panel, I'm going to select this upper jaw, and I'm going to say adjust position manually. And what I'll do is I'll rotate this around and the grid just makes this really easy to ensure that I'm aligned um, with the head in the lower left of the screen. Now in future versions this is going to get taken care of by just probably clicking a few buttons. Uh, you know you might just click on each hamular notch and the incisive papilla and everything just gets done automatically. But for right now, what we'll do is um, just use the anatomic references to align this manually. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the midline right through the center of this. So if you look at your upper model, you want to make sure that you're coming right through the center of the incisive papilla and that you're following right through the middle of the uh, mid-palatal suture. That looks good. Let's look vertically at this. Uh, that looks like it's oriented good in this green direction. If you needed to, you could fix the cant, but that looks nice. And so now we're done orienting that model. We can turn off the manual position and turn back on in your surfaces panel the lower model. Now clearly you've messed up the orientation when you do that, so we've got to bring the blue model back into orientation with the upper. So what I'll do is just come back into model manipulation, select the lower jaw, mandible, and this time we're going to do direct alignment. And instead of align, we're going to say align to model. And which model are we aligning it to? We're going to align it back to its original orientation with the upper model. So just by clicking OK, as you can see, this brings everything back into orientation. We're aligned with the head now, and we're ready to proceed with the denture. Actually, there's one other thing that we want to do. I, I forgot that we're going to do a uh, immediate denture in this case. So we obviously need to remove the teeth before we're able to do that. And so one way of doing that is that you could come in and use the cut tool. And so the cut tool can be activated right here. You could simply come in and cut individual teeth out like so. Oh, you have to select this model. So I could come in you can remove the teeth this way and as you can see that uh, removed them you might have to come back and take a second swipe at it but I'm actually going to back that up and I'm gonna not do it that way I actually liken this to uh, to go to mesh mixer to modify this and I'll show you the reason for that um, let's go and export this model right now so we're gonna export just this upper model this will not use up one of your exports we're going to call this Jane Doe Maxilla. And now what I'm going to do 
is actually I'll just open up a new window of Mesh Mixer. We'll import that model. And so let me find Jane Doe. And here is our model. <clears throat> now what I'm gonna do to remove the teeth is use the select tool. And the reason I like to do this in Mesh Mixer is just because I can use this kind of highlighter function and I can do a bit more of a precise job. So you can certainly use either option that you want. Um, if you're not really familiar with Mesh Mixer, just use the, the cut tool in Blue Sky Bio. That certainly works just as well. And I don't have to be super careful to follow the exact gingival margin. Remember, this is going to be an extraction socket, and so things are going to heal up. You're going to have a little room to compress tissue and such. So I'm just trying to get a general rough outline of these teeth. Make sure I'm not missing any little spots. That looks good. And now I'm just simply going to push delete. That will obviously leave you with some holes. I missed a spot here, so let me highlight that. And make sure I didn't miss anything else. Okay, that looks good. And now we need to fill that back in. So what I can do is analysis inspector, and it'll show me any holes in the mesh. I just want to fix this one. <clears throat> So as you can see, it's remeshed that area. I'll say done. And one other thing that you could do is come in, just highlight all that. And I like to expand the ring a couple of times. And then push deform smooth. And that's just going to smooth this out and make it a little nicer contour. Uh, you could increase or decrease the amount of smoothing that gets done and then accept that. So now we have our model that is ready to do our, our denture on. And if you needed to, you can always use your sculpt tools. Sorry, I had a quick phone call there. You can always come in, use your brushes, and use the robust smooth tool, and you could further smooth things out if you wanted to, but this is really getting to be overkill at this point when I'm starting to do all this kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna hit, make sure that there's no big high spots, no real rough areas. Because you can expect to have to adjust this once you pull the teeth and uh, deliver this anyway. So this is all done. I'm gonna file, export this, and I'm going to save this again as my Jane Doe model. And then just pull it right back into Blue Sky Plan. Okay, so back to Blue Sky Plan, file, import STL, <clears throat> and let's find Jane Doe. So now this is the Jane Doe model that's had the teeth virtually extracted. And here you can see that we have both models, the green and the yellow. And as you notice, the model is in the correct orientation relative to the bottom, because while I was outside of Blue Sky Plan, I didn't mess with its orientation any. So when you pull that back in, it's still gonna be in the right position. Now we're ready to go in module up to the denture module. All right, so denture module is open now and we just need to add the teeth. So plus teeth and choose which library you're gonna do. And now the first thing you're gonna to have to figure out is are you gonna use physical teeth sets? Uh, you know, we have the nobilium teeth in here. Uh, so we could use any of the nobilium molds that are present. Um, this is going to be just an immediate denture, a throwaway type. So let's use a, a uh, just all printed denture for this. Um, what I'm going to do is choose the Mitch Hurst Flat Anatomy Library, and I'm going to leave second molars off. So I'm going to say select all maxillary teeth, but then I'll control select and remove those second molars. Now I'm going to push add select a teeth as a chain and just shift left click to drop those into the case. As you can see, it's going to bring in the entire uh, uh, chain of teeth already strung together in an ideal arch form. And now I can begin positioning these. 
uh, within the arch. Now, it is more difficult to do an immediate denture setup than it is a, a dual arch setup because when you do a dual arch, occlusion's already set, the upper and lowers are already in the right orientation relative to one another. But in one of these cases, we're gonna have to actually uh, figure that out. So we're gonna be setting it to the lower arch and that's gonna require some individual tooth tweaking. Um, so I'll show you how I do that. Now the first thing I notice is that this looks a little constricted uh, for the um, arch because as you can see the midline is lined up here but these are just really uh, sunken in too far in that area. So first of all I'm going to just bring this down, oops, undo that, get it approximately in the right position relative to the lowers. That looks good. If you needed to scale things, you can scale it right here. As you can see, I'm gonna undo that chain, but that's where you would scale these if the, you feel like they're too big, too small, whatever. These look like they're roughly the right size. And so now what I'm going to do is turn on the tooth chain and we can now begin positioning these teeth um, to better conform to the arch. So I'm gonna turn off my lower model temporarily, and I'm first of all just gonna to try to align things to the socket. Okay, so. Pull that back over just a little bit. Align that with the central incisors. And now the tooth chain can be locked at this central, and I'm gonna pull the lateral over into the right socket. Same with the canine. And now I can begin tweaking these a little bit. Let's undo that change. I don't quite like how that moved. Probably rather lock here and then bring this back. And you will need to just toggle on and off your lower model, evaluate where you're at in relation to it. Okay, so that one looks like it needs to come in a little bit, so I'll lock both on either side and pull it that way. Grab this part of the chain again, pull it back. Okay, we're getting roughly in the right position now. All right, the canine looks like it's lo uh, lining up in the right position. These posteriors need to come more centered over the ridge. Let's look at how the lower is lining up. Perhaps a little too far. Maybe right in there. And now we can begin doing some individual tooth tweaking. So turn off the tooth chain. And here you can actually use the uh, manipulate model. And that's going to turn on the ability to tweak individual teeth. So I can turn that on. I can begin moving things up. I think I want to reduce the flare of these individual teeth. So I'm going to rotate them more upright. Now periodically what I'll do is uh, turn back on the tooth chain, show hide tooth chain, and as you can see it's going to rechain everything because as I do these little changes, I'm causing the teeth to impinge into one another and I'm kind of messing up uh, their relative position, not maintaining perfect um, alignment one to another. And so I'll just turn that on and off periodically. Uh, that's looking good. Let's turn on the entire tooth chain again. Maybe pull this down a little bit and spin it over. And I want to get these 
teeth close to the opposing, but not really impinging much. So as you can see, I've got a tiny bit of impingement right there, back just off of that. That looks about ideal. This canine tooth, again, could be rotated a little bit more to maintain a better contact. Now we're getting awfully close at this point. Um, now we just need to focus in on the posterior teeth. As you can see here, I've got a fair amount of impingement in this area. So I'm gonna manipulate model again. I need to go up with this tooth. Maybe rotate it down a slight bit. Just a tiny bit of a contact right there. I could maybe get that by rotating a slight bit more and minimizing that. There, that's just a pinpoint of a contact. That will be great. This one, I'm just going to move up slightly once again. Minimal contact there. That looks good. Okay, just look at it aesthetically. Make sure you like the alignment of the teeth. That tooth appears to be able to come upright it a little bit more. And now let's focus on the other side. Once again, I think I can take care of that contact by just rotating this tooth a slight bit. I need to take it up vertically just a hair. Rotate it and go up a tiny bit. There, slight, slight contact. This tooth can come down until I generate just the tiniest of a contact. So now I'm liking this occlusion. I think we're ready to go ahead and make the denture at this point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select the yellow model, which I have visible. It's a maxillary denture, and I'm gonna push create denture. The first step is identifying the path of insertion. And so, most maxillary dentures get inserted from about that angle. That's where I'm gonna uh, identify this as. Now, do you want to block out the undercuts or not? This is a deal where usually in a definitive denture, I would choose to uh, not block out undercuts, but rather to maintain all of those undercuts. But in the case of, a, of an immediate denture, I really do anticipate that this is going to get relined with something. So I'm gonna actually create a little uh, slop space in there. I don't, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do that by allowing uh, the software to block out the undercuts. And so if I say undercuts up to zero, that's gonna really be telling it don't allow undercuts and it'll block all of those out. Um, the other thing I can do is define the posterior palatal seal. Let's turn this blue model off. Now for the posterior palatal seal, you simply turn this on and you're gonna say shift left click and shift left click in each hamular notch. That's going to um, bring up just the stock shape of a uh, posterior palatal seal. You can modify this as you see fit. You've got all these um, sliders that can change the positioning of this. You can make it wider, more exaggerated. You can also change the thickness. And so I like where that is. I like um, the amount of undercut that it's gonna block out, and so now I'm going to push next. So now here is our model that the denture is going to be fabricated on. As you can see, the undercuts have been blocked out, the posterior palatal seal has been carved in, and now we're ready to identify the border of the denture. So I'll start out right here, and I'm just basically going to, actually I'm gonna bring this down a little bit because, let's clear that and start over. It's just thinking again, since I will be relining this, there's no need to go all the way to the very uh, 
border of where you expect the denture to be because I'd really rather my um, borders get formed by the reline that's going to be done. Okay, so we'll leave it a little shy. Plus this is also an alginate impression, so you know it's overextended somewhat, so no need to build all the way up in there. Your final dot, you gotta drag back into the first one or otherwise it's not gonna let you proceed, okay? Next. Okay, here's the initial gingival base. Uh, you can see I had it um, build at the default thickness of three and looking at that now in hindsight, I'm thinking that's probably a little too much but we'll, uh, we'll just dial that back with the festooning tools. Now this step uh, will be eliminated in the next uh, update of the software, but it's basically asking where do you want to build more gingiva from? Essentially put it at the contact point. Next. And then um, draw about a five millimeter perimeter around the teeth. And this is where that extra gingiva is going to get built from. go next all right now we're ready to clean this base up some so the very first thing I'm going to do is smooth this out I'm going to turn the strength up to a maximum and I'm going to really get after it here on this ridge because that is uh, that's a little too bulky for my tastes so we're gonna smooth this out quite a bit And now I'm going to use the local deform tool because this does it a little faster. So the local deform tool, I can change the size of it. I'm gonna pull these uh, bulbous areas just way back. Like that, that's way too bulbous. And if you ever see one of these little things where it turns red like that, that means you've got a problem where your mesh is uh, kind of fold it over itself so just get your smooth tool out hit it with the smooth tool and you should hopefully see that resolve might take a few whacks at it if you've done a pretty significant fold and it could just be that I really went way too aggressively so let's drag that out again and there you can see that that's made that disappear Now you want to make sure that your teeth are going to have enough retention to really hold into the base. So especially on the lingual, get a good bit of that tooth covered up so that it's going to be bonded in nice and solid and not have a tendency to pop out. On the buckle, you don't want to go as far as you did on the lingual but definitely get a nice little rim of the teeth covered up so that they'll have enough retention from the buckle gingiva as well. That was too much. Let's undo that. You see what I did there? I drug it so much that it went uh, basically through the mesh. So I need to not do that as drastically. Let's smooth everything again. You can also use the add and remove tool. So we use this, same thing, you have a spot size. If you just push shift, that's going to be an add tool. If you were to use the control button, that would be a remove tool. So I'm going to smooth out that little divot where the posterior palatal seal is. And this is uh, really looking like it's pretty decent. Let's do a remove tool and not cover up quite so much of that canine. So I'm going to just do little spots at a time. All 
Okay, so for an interim immediate denture, I think this is more than adequate. If you wanted to get fancy and start doing festooning and all that kind of stuff, I mean, you could absolutely come in here with a uh, with your add tool and do more of a uh, gingival roll type of a thing. So I'm gonna turn the strength up to maybe three quarters of the way and about a spot size like this, hold your shift button and you could come in and do a gingival roll like so. You're really not trying to add more onto the tooth, but rather just a uh, raised margin around the tooth. Let's do that maybe on the front six teeth just to uh, demonstrate it. Just lightly smooth that out. Okay, and uh, this looks like it's ready to go ahead. So now what I'll do is just push uh, next. Uh, so it says intersections have to be resolved first. What that tells me is that there's, again, one of those little red areas that I have uh, removed too much and it's going into that. So what I'm gonna do is turn off the visibility of everything except for my base. And there, now you can see it very easily. So simply grab your add tool, blow that up a little bit. Now that's all taken care of. Let's go back, turn back on the visibility of everything. Don't need those. And now it should allow me to proceed forward next. And finally, you've got your tooth offset. Now this is the amount of spacer between these. So if you were gonna do these uh, teeth in a different material, like print them in white, gingiva in pink, this is the spacer between those two. 0.2 should be about right. If you wanna make real sure, you could go up to 0.3. Uh, let's split the difference. Um, we don't need a, a tooth uh, reduction coping. If we were using physical teeth, then this would be a big problem because this would be impinging into the model. So you could make a reduction coping that would show you where to grind on these teeth. But since these are going to be printed, the software is going to automatically uh, cut those back, so I don't really need it. So let's finalize this denture. Okay, the software has finished this, and now we have all of our finalized files. If you were to look at this now, you can see that the internal of the denture base is solid. Uh, we've had the teeth cut back, and so now we're ready to export this. Now, if I want to do this out of two independent materials, then what I'd do is I would export the denture final. That's the one with sockets in it. As I look right here, you can see the socket for that tooth. Um, if I wanted to do it as a monolithic, then rather than this denture base, I would export this one, the one that just says denture base. I would export this and all of the uh, teeth shown, and that's going to make this monolithic when you export them together. But I'm going to do two different materials. So let's come up here to File, Export Data. And first of all, I'm going to export the teeth as a chain because I want to uh, print all of those together. And so all of the teeth should be checked on that are visible. I'll export this. Let's call this Jane Doe teeth. Save that and then come up and export just the base. So this time turn all the teeth off. Export Jane Doe base. So now you're done in the software and it's just a matter of printing this. So if you came into your 3D printer software, I'm using the Moonray uh, from Sprintray, you could just hit the plus and you need to add your model. So this is from my desktop and let's find Jane Doe's um, teeth. As you can see here, this is the entire chain of teeth. We can orient those. Now I usually do the chewing side down because I don't want to have to mess with the intaglios since they're going to affect the fit of the denture. You'll have to add supports. I usually go low on the density. Generate the supports. Now I'm not hooked up to the printer right now but if I was 
and I printed at 100 micron thickness. This is going to take about an hour and seven minutes to print. Um, so you could do that in one run with white and then do a second run with your pink material, your denture base material. Here's your denture base. I usually do leave the intaglio up on that because I don't want to generate anything that's going to be uncomfortable to the patient and have to trim all that off. Here would be your base for printing. This would take, let's go to next dent, denture base, 100 micron. This is a 58 minute print. So in roughly two hours, you would have both of these, and then you could simply bond those teeth together. They're going to all bond in as one piece. I leave these supports on the teeth until they're bonded in, and then break them off, polish it, and you're ready to go. So this is really the whole process to do a, uh, a single denture from beginning to end. And uh, as you can see, it's not that technically difficult. And this makes for a really nice low cost option for making uh, really dentures of any kind, but boy, especially for immediates where you just maybe want a healing denture for them to wear six months, this denture is gonna take you, you know, 15 minutes of time and it's gonna cost you 10 to $15 to make. So it's really hard to beat that. But I hope you found that helpful and we'll see you later.